created the rocks that we're going to be looking at. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Roger Weens, who is the PI of the ChemCam. Thank you, Mike. So uh, to complement this imaging, a rover like Curiosity also needs to get compositional information from a distance. Uh, and so ChemCam uh, fulfills that role. It will help guide the rover to the most interesting samples uh, in which the, uh, the uh, analytical and contact and in situ instruments can spend more time uh, and be most efficient by, by doing this with the most interesting in uh, samples that we find at a distance. So ChemCam consists of two instruments that share the same telescope up on the mast. One is, uh, and, and let's go ahead and roll the, uh, the first video clip, one is a laser-induced breakdown spectrometer, we call it LIBS, L-I-B-S, and the other is a remote microimager which provides contact close-up images of the spots that we shoot with the laser. So LIBS has many advantages. It uh, can remove the dust from a distance by multiple laser shots and it can also analyze that dust but it can remove it and then analyze the rock that's underneath without being hindered by the surface. And so it's like an arm that can reach out up to 25 feet away brush something off, analyze it, actually look at the weathering surfaces and the interior of the rock at the same time. Uh, and uh, so uh, uh, there, are, there are two main, uh, actually before I go on, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mention that the, the instrument is a multinational uh, a collaboration between France and the U.S. And so half of the instrument was built in France and was contributed by the French Space Agency and the other half was built in the U.S. So to represent the French part of it is uh, in the audience is Dr. Olivier Gano, uh, and you can address questions to him as well. Um, so there are two main parts to the ChemCam instrument corresponding to the, the French and U.S. Uh, and uh, so we're going to run the next clip here and show you those first and then we'll give a little demonstration. So here is the body unit. This was built in Los Alamos in the U.S. And you see a command and control unit at the bottom and then you see three spectrometers which actually do, do the sensing for the, the ChemCam libs. This is the mast unit shown here and this was contributed by France and it uh, consists of the laser, the electronics for that laser, and a, and a telescope with a four and, four and a half inch diameter, and the camera that takes RMI images. And uh, we're, what we're going to do here is we're going to show you a little demonstration of what LIBS looks like in real life, not in the animations. So we're going to shoot at a uh, pyrite target. It's a mineral target that's about eight feet away, and you're going to see the LIBS flashes. And you'll note that the laser beam itself is actually invisible, uh, but for the sci-fi buffs we have to show it uh, in the pictures, um, but there you see a still image of the LIBS plasma. So the, the laser basically takes the energy of a million light bulbs and it, and it focuses it onto a spot the size of a pinhead and what that does is it ablates material off of that sample uh, in an extremely hot state uh, of thousands of degrees and when it comes off it's, it's shining brighter than a flame and so what we do is we look at that light and we sense the composition of the samples that way. So the next slide will actually show how that works. Uh, so LIBS really consists of two uh, components or two, two uh, aspects. The first is the laser. Uh, and that is the interrogating part. So that sends the energy in to the sample and produces the plasma. And then the second part is the spectrographs, which we have to sense the light and tell us the composition. And at the bottom of this image, you'll see different color plasmas. And that's actually how we see them with our eyes. And so when we were running calibrations, we could, uh, we could say, oh, this sample looks blue, or that one looks a little different color. And the other thing that you notice from this is that these are relatively large plasmas. Uh, and that's the case on Mars, in fact. With the Mars atmosphere, you get a bigger and brighter plasma than you do it in, in these pictures that I just showed in the video on Earth. Uh, and so I hope my colleague Mike will get us some good pictures of our, of our plasmas there. Um, but now I'll show you how ChemCam gives uh, the, the, the sensing part of that with the next image. So this is the spectral range from one of our three spectrometers that sits in the body of the rover. And by the way, the light comes down from that telescope down along the mast and in, into the body of the rover along a 20-foot long optical fiber. And then it gets into the body and it's sensed like this. And so the spectrometers actually spread out the light along, their, uh, along the wavelengths. And then you see these uh, emission lines. And the emission lines uh, represent different elements. 
elements and they're, they're labeled there for this spectral range and you can see that some of the elements have many emission lines, some have only a few, but we expect our instrument to cover essentially the whole periodic table. And so we go from the UV into the, through the visible range and into the, a little bit into the IR range as well. And that's done, uh, or, or I should mention, some of these elements include uh, elements like hydrogen, nitrogen, carbon and oxygen, which are of course all very interesting, uh, not only to follow the water on Mars, but also to look for uh, materials that would be of interest for the exobiology. So now I'll turn our attention uh, to the imaging, and we do provide context images for the analysis spots. These are very small analysis spots, and so we want to see what we're shooting at. So just to demonstrate that, we took a U.S. $1 bill, and we, uh, and we put it at uh, a distance of 10 feet away, and, uh, and we shot it there. Um, but we'll show you the image, and uh, the image in the next slide actually shows uh, just, the, just this part of the dollar bill. And from 10 feet away, say those of you in the front row, uh, you wouldn't be able to see a lot of detail. Um, but this uh, image that you can see um, up close, if it's, if it's really uh, actually uh, expanded, you would be able to see a, a whole lot of detail on that, on that dollar bill. And so we provide, in the context of these um, Lib's shots, we provide uh, an image that has almost the resolution of Mike's, but it's monochromatic and we're really doing that just to show us what are, what are the, uh, the samples that we're shooting at. So in summary, a ChemCam really just provides uh, uh, a guide for uh, the other instruments on the rover to uh, help, the, help optimize the other instruments and it also provides science in its own right as well. Marcia Dunn, Associated Press. My first question about the ChemCam. Um, you mentioned dusting away the the uh, the dust. Uh, do you actually grind or cut into the rock at all with your lasers, or is that just you know how deep do you go if you do it all? Yes. So uh, it depends on the, uh, the the hardness of the rock, of course, and how well a laser couples to it. But most rocks we're going in, say uh, about a micron per laser shot, and uh, so we've we've d demonstrated uh, down to about 600 microns in uh, in our testing. We actually didn't want to use up. We didn't want to use the laser too much before we got to Mars, and we 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 certainly believe we can go down a millimeter.